was a 25-year-old male accountant who presented with an average NPRS of 5 out of 10 medial wrist pain. Symptoms were intermittent, worse with activities and exercises involving end-range wrist extension, which he reported doing often in his exercise program. A time frame of two weeks ruled out the possibility of both a contractile and articular dysfunction, as both require an eight-week time frame. Symptoms that are predominantly intermittent made an inflammatory state unlikely. The lack of trauma reduces the likelihood of fracture or structurally compromised tissues. Symptoms could linger for over 20 minutes, which rules out postural syndrome, leaving derangement and other as possible classifications. Upon physical examination, the patient's most obstructed movement was wrist extension. Wrist flexion and supination were painful. The patient reported in his history that end range loaded extension worsened his symptoms. This was confirmed by a worsening of the patient's symptoms after performing 20 repetitions of end range loaded wrist extension. Because wrist extension worsened the patient's symptoms, the opposite direction of wrist flexion was tested in loaded, unloaded, and with traction. Flexion with traction abolished end range flexion pain, restored extension range of motion to normal limits, and abolished pain with a handstand push-up, confirming derangement with a directional preference of flexion with traction. The patient was instructed to perform wrist flexion with self-traction every one to two hours until re-evaluation. In 48 hours, the patient reported an 80% perceived improvement in the pain associated with his greatest functional deficit. Despite significant improvement, supination remained painful. All flexion loading strategies were exhausted in an attempt to abolish pain with supination, which had no effect. Extension had already proven to worsen symptoms, so it was determined that sagittal plane movement had been exhausted. Repeated supination with patient overpressure had no effect. Supination with therapist-generated traction abolished pain while the movement was under traction, although pain returned immediately after traction was released. Compression had no effect. Applying anterior force to the distal radius and posterior force to the first metacarpal during supination abolished the patient's symptoms during movement with a significant reduction in pain after. More repetitions were performed in an attempt to generate more pain reduction. Pain with supination was abolished fully after 30 repetitions, which confirmed the patient's new directional preference of supination with proximal anterior and distal posterior force. Upon the second reevaluation in one week, the patient reported a 100% perceived improvement. A verbal reevaluation was performed one month and one year after discharge. The patient reported having no reoccurrence of symptoms no functional limitations, and no longer needing to perform his home exercise program.